just because you feel like it's for everyone doesn't mean everyone thinks it's as serious or as a big deal as you do. I know that's probably not the funnest thing to hear, but not everyone feels as crazy about it as you do. Like some people are just like, yeah, I guess that's important, but but so you you have different stages, right? With what you're dealing with, you'll have those people that is like, oh, maybe I should think more about this. You have those people that are diehard, like, no, we need to make a movement, and so you kind of need to like figure out with that ideal client avatar, like which stage am I trying to hit here, and what kind of um, connections would fit that, you know, if you're looking for those diehard people, then what kind of connections would fit that? Welcome to the LinkedIn Basics Workshop hosted by Fien Obion and in partnership with eLaunch Academy. Buckle in and start taking notes. So that's really cool. Um, so I think when we get to the Q&A, maybe if you write it in the chat box, Diakri can let me know and then I can answer those questions for you because there is quite a few of you on there. So. Um, that way it can be very interactive. So yeah, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, my name is Fiona O'Brien, and I am the CEO and founder of Okiki Consulting. And what I love to do is help business owners and entrepreneurs convey their personal brand stories and their company brand stories through video content and other forms of content as well. Uh, that's something I feel very passionate about because I feel like everyone has such a unique story and skill set to actually bring to the world, so I want to help them do that. And I guess actually before I get started for the people in the room, uh, do you mind introducing yourself and uh, telling everyone why you're here and why you're interested in learning about LinkedIn? So uh, maybe we'll start with you. Sure. <laughs> My name is James Dietrich. I'm a financial planner. I've been uh, a planner for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's something in LinkedIn that, that our business could learn to leverage and maybe make a bigger splash in the social media awesome. scene. Yeah. Awesome, that's very cool. And yeah, maybe I'll go to the Yakri next. Yeah, I'm here and I'm excited to learn about LinkedIn. Uh, we all know that LinkedIn is very, very massive and it's, I would say, almost better than Facebook when doing business with people because people know that you go to LinkedIn to do business with people, and right? you don't go there to post family pictures. So I'm here to learn how to leverage that option. <laughs> <laughs> we have some more people yeah. coming in. <laughs> and uh, Lisa. Um, so I'm Lisa McNabb, and I own my own company, Unbound Market, and um, I'm really interested in learning about LinkedIn and um, seeing how it can benefit my business and reach out to other people to benefit as well. Awesome. And we'll go to Daniel, who's uh, behind the scenes with the camera. <laughs> yeah, my name is Daniel, and I, I'm a photographer, videographer. Um, and yeah, I uh, freelance uh, for Deco Photography. And uh, yeah, I'm also interested and excited to learn more about LinkedIn. Awesome. Yeah. And you just came in, and I'd love to meet you. <laughs> What's your name? And Melvina, yes. awesome. And what brings you here for the workshop tonight? Um, I guess the same reason um, is I'm really interested in learning more about how to sort of maximize my uh, experience and exposure on LinkedIn. Awesome, awesome. And uh, just as always to, to meet more people. To Great. Learn, doing business and stuff. So. Great. Yeah. So thanks everyone for sharing. I'm really excited to get into it. So here's how today's workshop will go, or tonight's workshop will go. So I want to talk about the LinkedIn opportunities. Um, as you all are excited to learn about that, clearly we're all in the same headspace to learn what that actually entails and the importance of profile optimization. Uh, I'm going to go over a brief overview of this blueprint I created, which is how to dominate LinkedIn with your personal brand and talk about my story on using LinkedIn actively so far. And I also want to talk about personal branding. So whether you're an entrepreneur or someone in the corporate sector, uh, this is still important for you. And this is very important to do on LinkedIn. And I want to walk through with you guys actually my personal LinkedIn profile. So you kind of get to see some of the things that I'm talking about actively. And then I'm going to talk about the types of content you should be posting. And then we'll have time for a Q&A. So yeah, I'm very excited to get into that. So the first thing I want to say is that LinkedIn is a total gold mine. Uh, if you are in the corporate sector and you don't have a profile 
that's optimized um, and you're looking for a job, you're missing out on an enormous opportunity. So 87% of job recruiters use this platform to hire. And actually, um, I got to do some voice messaging with a job recruiter on LinkedIn today because he was talking about bad resumes. And I made a comment on his post, and he went forward to message me about this is the like worst type of resume you could send me based on my computer system, and this is what works, or this is the type of thing that works. So it's very interesting because a lot of them actually use software. It goes through the computer system, and if you don't have those kind of keywords to highlight to them who you are, what you do, and your skills from your profile, they won't notice you. So you kind of want to have that profile optimized. And then the resume is kind of a whole other deal. And there's people out there to help with that. 44% <laughs> um, of users on LinkedIn have incomes over 75,000. So for some of you, if you're looking for high ticket clients, this might be a place you may want to look. Um, there's a lot of executives on there, managers on there. So that's a place you want to make yourself visible. And 50% of B2B buyers' uh, purchase decisions are actually made on this platform. And the last point is the most exciting to me because I'm a content creator and creative, and it's that 1% of everyone on the platform creates content. So that's 500 million people, and only 1% of those people are actually creating content. And the other part that's interesting about that is LinkedIn has very high organic reach right now. It's among the highest, I'd say, other than TikTok. <laughs> it's one of the easiest places to get seen very quickly um, by most of your network. Whereas with Facebook, um, posts could get as little as 30% organic reach at this point. And Facebook's going through a lot of changes. Um, they're kind of like the grandfather, right, of the social media world. So really, unless you have a lot of ad spend, a lot of money for that, you aren't going to get seen as easily on Facebook. So that's why this is another area you may want to start looking into. So why is profile optimization important? Of course, that's your first handshake with people. As soon as they make a connection with you, the first place they're going to check is your profile. And so for some of you who are entrepreneurs trying to connect with clients, if this isn't optimized, if this isn't communicating well, who you are and, and what you have to offer them and what you're about, you're missing out on those opportunities right there. So that's very important to know. And as you can see, in the blueprint I was telling you about, that is actually the first step. So I like that everyone I work with gets their profile optimized. And then from there, we work on making strategic connections because we want to be prepared. We want to have that foundation for when people actually begin to connect with you. So that when they see that profile, they fully understand what you're about, what you have to offer, and there's no questions asked. So there, we go from making strategic connections and then joining strategic groups. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. And joining strategic groups. And once we have started to build those networks, so some of you have meetup groups. You have clearly spent the time building that network. Um, you obviously don't want to create content to an audience that isn't there at all. So once you spend time building that, the next step in that blueprint would be then to create content and then to leverage those connections and those groups. So my personal story. So like I said, uh, with my company, Okiki Consulting, I help um, business owners convey their personal brand stories and company brand stories through video content and other forms of content as well. And I actually didn't start being this enthusiastic about LinkedIn. I started with Facebook and Instagram. That was kind of like where I got really into social media. And I was really interested in the behind the scenes of Facebook, like the ads manager trying to figure out how much you could get as much bang for your buck with the ads manager. And that was really kind of my world. But um, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and a lot of content creators were telling, um, yeah, were telling us that you know only 1% of people on the platform are actually creating content. And the fact that there's so many major players on that platform, I thought as a content creator, I should not allow myself to miss this opportunity, especially with the organic reach. And, when I, and you don't just have to be a content creator. Just, there's, just think of all the professional people on there and the networking opportunities. So if you have anything to say about your industry at all, you should be creating content on there. And so I started actively, hopefully people in the back can see that, I started actively creating content as of September. 
So I was posting regular content. Um, that's this year. So around that time, I had about 1,600, 16,000, um, sorry, 1,600 connections. And around that time, I was posting actively content surrounding my podcast, which my podcast was interviewing people who had found success in their businesses or in art or as musicians or as athletes and just posting those clips of videos. I also would just post videos with me discussing different aspects of the industry. You know, what are some free resources? What are some good resources for you if you're a content creator, if you're an entrepreneur? And through those videos, I was actually able to book clients. It was really crazy. People would watch that and then go to my website and fill out the form and say I want to work with you and it was like that straightforward and so uh, two of the ones I want to highlight um, that were really cool for me is this one guy uh, Blake Evans he has an organization that he founded called Wounded Warriors Weekend and it's for people who have PTSD and so he um, from war and so he's he lives all the way near Nipawin and he saw my content and the cool thing was that video is actually people's way of kind of getting an idea of who you are as a person. When you talk about personal brand, that's really their first, uh, their closest way to know you before they know you. And so he said through the videos, he felt like, okay, I want to work with this person. You don't seem like a jerk. <laughs> I want to meet you. And he drove three hours just to meet me, just to help him rebrand his website. And then another client that I got to work with, uh, this was a really interesting one. I was actually supposed to be a market marketing intern for him in spring, but it kind of fell through like he didn't really, he wasn't really sure if he needed me. And then he saw my content on LinkedIn and he actually brought me back as a consultant. And he wanted me to be an event consultant for an event that he did um, with IBM and SAS and he brought in speakers and it was in different cities across Canada and that was just through content and so that was really cool to me and I think the only reason I could get their attention is because of course they're on the platform not a lot of people are posting and so when they see something it's just open it was just open advertising but it wasn't really like I was advertising I was just sharing stories and similarly with the podcast guests I was able to get some pretty big people uh, on my podcast that would be hard to reach otherwise. So one of them, um, you know, when I talked about newer platforms, like TikTok may not be super relevant to everyone in this group. Does everyone know what TikTok is? Yeah, yeah you do, okay. Yeah. So that's like the next kind of big one for like the Gen Z's right now, it's super huge. But uh, there's an influencer on there, she has a million followers. And so I was able to get an interview with her because I messaged her through LinkedIn. I know if it had been through TikTok, it would probably be much harder to reach her. And another one is Santia Deck, who now just signed a multi-million dollar deal, and she is the highest paid female football player of all time. So I got to get some really like high quality guests for my podcast, simply because I was actively leveraging the platform, actively messaging people, actively um, creating content, content and interacting with their content. So that's why I wanted to share this opportunity with everyone else, because it's been such a short span of time and now as of December, I have 5,000 connections. And so there's just a lot that has come out of that process of, of just posting content actively for about four months. So as I said before, your profile expresses your personal brand. So that's the first impression that people get of you. That's their first stop. You want to make sure that that is ready to go. And I believe that personal branding is for everyone. So. I think obviously as entrepreneurs, you guys already understand that if the place is, you know, the marketplace is very saturated, that's the only way you'll stand out. But even for people in the corporate sector, as you're trying to apply for jobs, as thousands of people are applying for the same position you are, what actually makes you interesting to an organization that they should pick you over someone else? Really, if you think about it, you want to have your values, your skill set, what you've brought to the organization those achievements that you're proud of, and if those aren't reflected, uh, there's nothing that makes you more interesting than anyone else. Another thing too is, if you are loving your organization and you want that promotion, that's another thing to think about. So you really wanna put yourself out there because even within organizations, people still have to realize they do have a personal brand. And so this concept with the career, yes? So I just want to, pull back to, in September you said you had 1,600 connections. Yes. Okay. 
and that you've been doing all these posts, but I didn't pick up on how many connections do you have now? Oh, I said I have 5,000, yeah, 5,200 connections now. September to December? Yes. 4,000 connections? Yes. Four, so 4,000 connection growth in four months. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So does, does that um, translate into anything like because I know on LinkedIn they still have the, the likes and things like that. And mm -hmm. does, does, does that matter or make a difference for you in the last few months? And in terms of engagement? Yeah. Like with my content? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. There's definitely been a lot more um, engagement. There's people resharing it. There's people messaging me <laughs> saying, I saw this video. Can I work with you? What does that look like? So it's definitely, yeah, it definitely gives you more traffic. It gives you more notoriety. Um, I've been invited to speak on on a podcast for the first time um, because of the people engaging with my content so that would be in the new year so I think it's just again way more networking opportunities people get to know you um, so I know specifically for the Saskatoon environment because barely anyone's doing it here yeah. uh, people actually recognize me from LinkedIn now which is very interesting so I think that you know that gives you the opportunity if you're the one that they're seeing on a regular basis you're just the brand they begin to know and then when it comes to the point where people want to ask about someone who's an expert in the field i know they're going to come to me because they've seen me so many times so that's just kind of another way to to think of it and yeah so for the corporate sector um those those points that i just made i got that from the uh, from the book how women rise uh written by sally helgeson and Marshall Goldsmith, and um, she really talks about, it's interesting enough, this was pointed out women, but I think this could work for everyone, and she talked about in the resume that you should talk about what you do, what you hope to do in the future, and why you're qualified to do it. And she specifically pointed this out women because generally they tend to kind of hold back on, you know, showing their skills. And But I think for everyone this could work, and especially on the LinkedIn, profile. This is a way to represent yourself in your optimization. And then I adapted this for entrepreneurs and I said that on your LinkedIn profile you could show, especially if you want to lead with that, um, because some of you may also have your, your corporate experience on there too and that's totally fine. Um, but if you want to lead with your entrepreneurial um, ventures, I would really talk about the transformation process that you take the client on and what services you offer and why you're qualified to do this um, because again that will build the client's trust in you so yeah now we'll work through my profile <laughs> and any questions so far no okay <laughs> oh okay <laughs> um so here um I'm just going to walk through kind of the different pieces that I think are important for a LinkedIn profile that I think everyone should really pay attention to. So, um, yeah, actually Logan and Diakri have, uh, you know, first-hand data on this, but making sure you have a good profile picture actually makes a huge difference for people, you know, actually connecting with you and wanting to interact with you. So if it doesn't look like you're really there paying attention to just some random cell phone selfie, I, de I definitely don't recommend it. And it's not to say you can't be your authentic self on LinkedIn, but yeah, and I'll get into that later when I'm talking about like your <coughs> unique brands, but you definitely want it to represent you well. And then of course back here on the back cover um, photo, I really put, yeah, I put how I help business owners and entrepreneurs communicate their personal brand stories. I put that information right there, and a lot of people don't actually use that back photo, and that could be your banner ad, you know, your little billboard on there. So really, you could put as much information as you want. So, you know, put your contact information, put your website. You could put things like DM me, message me if you want this, you know, like make it whatever you, you want it to be so it's super clear because the reality is when people go to your profile, they will go here first and see your headline first, long before they check any of this, you know. So you just want to make sure that is um, explaining yourself very clearly from the start. So yeah, for the people in the video, if you can't see that, make sure your background photo uh, has all the information about you, you know, it has your slogan or tagline, has your website contact information, and a call to action for people. And then make sure you have a nice, uh, clear 
profile photo that really represents you and your brand well. And similarly, I put my slogan or tagline in the headline. And I just want to show what I did here. Yeah, so you only get 120 characters in your headline. So sometimes that doesn't actually give you a lot of room to explain yourself. So let's say some of you have multiple roles. Like I talked to someone yesterday, she's author. She's also trying to do, um, you know, like a protein coaching thing. And she's also a Primerica rep. So we were trying to find a way to like <laughs> put all of that in her headline and still make it make sense. Now for her, I told her like, what is your leading brand? So we kind of went with that. And, the leading brand for her was that she wanted to lead with the fact that she's an author and, and the transformation process she hoped her books will make for people. And then from there we put the other pieces. And you just want this to be as clear as possible because if you want to elaborate on those many other roles you have, you have the about section to do that. But just think right off the bat, if I was someone who didn't know you from anywhere and I was to land on this, what would you want that person to actually understand about you? So um, if you need a some more space this is like a little hack I had but I put my first name and last name in the first name section and I put my company in the last name section and then that way I was able to write more in the headline so that's a little hack you guys did <laughs> so yeah <laughs> and now the about section I love this because this is where you can really elaborate as much as you want so again, I talk about um, the company, I talk about how I've been into video storytelling for like nine years, and I, I did a lot of it very recreationally on YouTube. I do have like a video on there that has like, I think 2,000 views of me just, <laughs> you know, traveling to Quebec and people like that and like, or doing like different ventures. So I enjoy the art of storytelling and, and really um, documenting my experiences for people through video. And so I talked about that. I talked about the growth that I've had on LinkedIn since I've started actively. Um, you can put that if you have any courses or um, places that you want them to go. And I have all my services on there. So you, you can write a lot in this section. And at the end, I actually have my contact information. So that's another thing. So if people go as far to like finally get to your about section, just make sure you give them all all they need and then this is the part that not everyone utilizes but this is the media section you can add so many videos to that I don't actually know what the limit is but I've seen people who have up to 30 at least the influencers I follow who are like very much into content creation on LinkedIn and so yeah I put my website on here um, you know just different links of what I want people to see you can upload that video directly or you can just put in a link and then it'll just generate and so, it, yeah, if you have any links to anything you're doing, your website or just different, you know, aspects of media that you've been part of or work or projects that you've had, I would highly recommend putting that in there. And so, similar to that with experience, um, so here's another thing I've started doing, and I actually learned this um, through, oh yeah, and for some of you who may need to add some sections, there's an add profile section up here. And so if there's any of these pieces that you actually don't have yet, um, make sure that you, yeah, press that button and then add whatever you, you need. And so I'm gonna see where the accomplishments. So some people, if you're in the science world, you know, might have patents and stuff that you wanna add. If you have courses, um, pro projects, books, so publications. So yeah, just make sure that you're adding um, as much as you possibly can. And so, oh yeah, around here with the experience section, oh, it's glitching. Okay, perfect. So with the experience section, what I've done is I have my company name at the top, and I actually have the different roles, and I'm probably gonna add a few more soon, but I have the different roles that I kind of do within my organization. So um, I actually recommend that because then you can kind of show like the different pieces of what you have to offer. So. Within what I do, I help with LinkedIn profile optimization, but also help with content creation. And so I want to show people um, just kind of what it looks like in the different features. And again, I also added media to show people what my LinkedIn videos actually look like. And it looks similar, again, to that About section. Uh, you can just fill in like um, the title, the company it's affiliated with, and um, 
you can put in your description, and then of course you can add the media. So yeah. And again, for some of you, if you've been also in the corporate world, like again, it's kind of your, your choice, but you can also keep this on there as well. And so for some of the people who are in the corporate world, I would say similarly, you want to list everything you did within that company. So I had an internship with AgWest Bio, and I helped them make a YouTube series. And it was really actually me just documenting my experience with their company. <laughs> and I just asked them, can I make a YouTube series out of this? Because you all do such different roles. I want to know what you do. Can I interview you? And so that's what they let me do. So all of the, those um, videos are also in the link. So for some of you, if you've done multiple things for the different companies that you've worked with, make sure to include all of that in your experience section. Don't just put like, you know, video assistant. Like make sure you really elaborate on all the different pieces that you had. And of course there's education. I also like this section too with licenses and certificates. So um, have all of you heard of lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning? No? Okay. So, uh, Lynda.com is just basically another online uh, learning database. They have, yeah. What, what's that, how does that spell? This is actually yeah. news to me now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Is there a marker here? Uh, yeah, just behind the TV on the table, there should be something. Okay. So, Linda, which is now LinkedIn Learning. So, um, LinkedIn actually bought this. So lynda.com, so that's a L-Y-N-D-A.com. <laughs> and basically, they have so many courses on so many different industries. So to, I guess, give an example, I learned HTML coding and CSS through the courses offered on here. They have video production courses, they have photography courses, just like anything you can think of. But they try to keep a pretty high, high standard of how they do their courses, and they have like um, coursework that you follow along, and at the end you get a certificate. And so I, I guess Linda, uh, sorry, LinkedIn, found them to be um, you know, more valuable than maybe a lot of those other ones that are out there, because they bought them. And the cool thing is now, when you finish a course, it actually publishes onto your LinkedIn profile. So again, if you want to continue to make yourself look more credible. With that being said, even if it's a Udemy um, certificate or a certificate through some other school, you can always add that as well. But I do really like the aspect that they just automatically publish it onto your profile. So if, again, if you want to keep furthering your skills and your knowledge, that's another thing <coughs> to do. And of course, volunteer experience. You can put all the roles you did. I really like this as well, um, skills and endorsements. So you can list. All, you know, try and list all the skills that you think you may have in, in different sectors. So I have a lot of people endorsing me for theater um, there, um, I, but I also try to put a lot of the other skills that I do have and, and uh, if people endorse you for that. And it's also another way to interact with people on the platform. You know, you can endorse someone in an area that you think they're good at and they'll endorse you back for something. So it's a way to kind of engage with people on the platform. And this is another area I enjoy too. If you have worked with someone, um, ask them for a recommendation. So uh, they kind of make it pretty easy. You just search for the person, and then they ask you in which, like I, I'll just do an example here. So if I put, yeah. So, and then they'll say, what's your relationship with the person? And then you can say, you know, like, this, I worked with the person this capacity, and then you can actually select from your list of experience like which role that was. So if that was like in a volunteer position or your business or corporation, and then it just sends to them. And then they, once they fill it out, it just publishes onto you. Uh, they actually let you revise it, but then you can just publish it onto your account. And then you have accomplishments. So that's kind of the basics of how I would optimize my profile. Um, any questions on that? No? <laughs> All right. There's a lot of sections you have in there. Which ones do you mostly recommend? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't have to go back. I don't have to go back. So which ones do I recommend? Um, I think for entrepreneurs, the most important would definitely be that background photo 
profile photo, headline, about section, and then of course recommendations because that's your testimonials. So again, um, and this, the recommendation thing is good for everyone, uh, even for those in the corporate sector, if you wanna really use things to make you look more interesting, get you know managers you've worked with, people you've worked with to really talk about how they worked with you and in, in what capacity they worked with you. Okay, so uh, that one kind of came up weird, but that is supposed to say strategic connections and groups. So now that you've made the effort to really set up your profile and make it ready for those people that you want to connect with, now we want to talk about making strategic connections and groups. So uh, the way I go about this is, does everyone know what your client avatar is? And actually, before I even say that, is everyone here in this room, would you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Or would you consider yourself, would any of you consider yourself as just working in the corporate sector and that's your focus? Um, if I could get a show of hands, like. I, I actually might have a quick request. Okay. Um, have we, had the chance yet to introduce ourselves or anything like I, that? I think yeah. most of us have, except for a couple of the new people yeah. that uh, came in towards the end. But yeah, I, I guess kind of to go over that again, is everyone here, would you consider yourselves entrepreneurs? Yes. Of course, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so for that, then I would say when you're going on LinkedIn and making your strategic connections, um, has everyone heard of the term client avatar? No? Okay, so that's just kind of um, thinking about your ideal client. Um, <laughs> Marker it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wish I could write as fast as I talk, but <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, so ideal client. So we want to think of, you know, all the, you know, demographics, psychographics, what are the traits, and for you, what are the, what is the industry um, that you think that this person would be in? Or what is the role? Would it be interesting to actually make a mock pro uh, LinkedIn profile? I don't know if that's a derailing of your plans, but it might mm -hmm. tie into the client's avatar idea, like how you would structure a headline for a certain industry and then how you would post that for the avatar. So it might take a while for me to create one, but I can show you somebody I did a coaching session with recently and um, kind of like what we came up with. I have a video, if you are on LinkedIn and you want to see any of my content, I have a lot of videos on this kind of stuff. So, um, but with her, she's actually in the beauty industry. So, or she's, she's into rebranding beauty brands. So, Initially, um, like her focus area is is Instagram, of course. Um, but we kind of before this was not looking like this at all. Um, so we kind of through the words that she had on her profile, we kind of really chunked together, tried to chunk together in like a sentence what she actually does for clients. So you know. She helps them create iconic um, brands and web design that really attract those high ticket, you know, female clients. So that's kind of what, what she's hoping to convey that she does for them. And then I told her, you know, get a good picture, make sure your background's nice and clear and really conveys that information. Now for her, she's looking for those people in the beauty industry um, and those high ticket clients. So I guess <laughs> to be very simple about it, when we were working together, we just looked up beauty. Now you can be way more specific than this. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of go into the filters in a minute. But we looked up beauty and then we looked up people. And then, there you go. There's like a lot of people. But the other part that was shocking to her and I, because that's not my area, was, um, which is the next part I'm gonna talk about, is groups. And just look how big this cosmetics and beauty network group is, wow. right? It's like 93,000 people. So um, for someone who wasn't sure there was a lot for her to do on the platform, is like, 
clearly there is. And I think because people see the platform a certain way, they don't realize the, how many different types of people are on there. So if you're specific about who you're trying to reach, uh, you can definitely communicate very quickly to your group. So I guess that's a really simple way of going about it. Now, yeah, so I think when you're thinking about your ideal client, you may type in something like beauty, but you yourself have to intrinsically know, am I looking for, you know, uh, wh what am I looking for in terms of like, am I looking for certain ages, sorry, certain ages or regions or genders, like depending on what your industry is, doesn't matter, you know? And so you kind of have to look at that and then kind of type in those keywords that kind of match with that ideal client that you have and then you can kind of scroll through there. And, and the cool thing is there's so many um, types of filters you can implement, you know, locations, you know, connections. Maybe you're looking for a specific company, so like L'Oreal came up, you know? So you can be really specific when you're trying to filter that person. And then from there, um, you can go into which type of groups do you think your ideal client would actually be in? So I showed you her example because it's different than mine, very different than mine. Um, I could also show you one that I did for uh, my dad recently because I got him to start <laughs> um, making content. And he's a doctor actually, but he's really into research. And so his video was trending on the health um, board for LinkedIn because barely anyone is posting these videos. And um, there were dentists, scientists, doctors who were like loving what he had to say. And he was literally just talking about how uh, these are the limitations of research in, in my field. And this is why we don't get enough funding. You know, just having discussions, that's enough to get people to message you, to get people interested because no one's really doing that. And again, these are the groups that were kind of available for him to join. So, so that's just to give an idea. So once you kind of know who you're trying to reach, then really think about, okay, what topics, and then think about what groups. So I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe this is another way to go around the room again and kind of get to know the people who just came in. But for you, uh, what do you do, I guess? And um, who, do you, who do you feel you're trying to reach? Okay, so um, I do, I, I have two streams basically. One is I work with uh, international students, mm. and then the other one is I do intercultural engagement workshops, presentations, and assessments on awesome. engaging people's cultural intelligence. Mm. Awesome. And so what I say, when people ask me that question, I say that I am swimming lessons. So what I do is for everybody, because it's about life skills. Life skills. Yeah, so there's no, I. Um, necessary target, um, but ages 10 and up, I think, would probably learn the most out of what I do. Mm. Sorry, backtrack. You do intercultural relations through swimming lessons? Is that what No, I just call it swimming lessons because swimming lessons is a life skill, right? Mm. We all need it. Right. To, should, right? So that, and so is uh, what I do. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. So, and then you find that you mostly work with like children? No. I offer my services mm -hmm. for everyone but I feel like ages 10 and up 10 and up okay I'm just trying to understand who you get more regularly I guess so regularly I work with uh, professionals in um, corporate and in um, international education and um, edu just yeah education and a lot of interest in medicine mm -hmm. and done that yet, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But, yeah. I have a question that might tie into the, <coughs> that ties in naturally well with the, with the client avatar part as well, mm -hmm. is identifying what is it that keeps your prospect awake at night? What's that pain point that uh, is bugging them and why are you the solution to that pain point? So mm -hmm. I, I personally find what you're doing fascinating because intercultural interculture, workplace dynamics, uh, it plays a huge role, especially in a place like Canada, in North America. Uh, so, but what's the specific pain point that might actually help with this client avatar bit that's going yeah. on there? Yeah, definitely. And to add to that, for um, be like political correctness. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> and to that's, add, that's it, really. It is. It, that's the major. The it's area. Isn't it kind of teaching though too, because like when you're out and about, there's so many 
different cultures that are so afraid of the other culture, yeah. mm -hmm. and what it is, they just don't understand. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's, it's education yes. of, of the individual. That's what it is. And what really. you learn from each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I say it's a life skill. It is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter Absolutely. what you do, where you are. You are interacting with people all over the world that's all the huge. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and I take people out of their comfort zone into their discomfort zone and help people just get it all out and, and get you know, we say no shame, Does no blame. Take away the prejudice? It, yes, it's it's really That's fantastic. Awesome. I mean but people get real, you know, I, I call it like dumb and dirty. <laughs> but right. then that's the way you move forward. If, yeah. you, if we keep hiding behind yeah. political correctness, we are not moving forward, mm. uh, you know? And anyway, that's what I do, so. No, that's really cool. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think the reason why. And necessary. <laughs> yeah, oh and necessary. So I'd be, I would be, I mean, if I was building my, sorry, my LinkedIn profile, I would definitely be more strategic and like, I wouldn't be like, hey, 10 year olds, where are you? You know, I'd be more like, who is my actual demographic on LinkedIn? and then that kind of thing but yeah which yeah. is super key and so it's really interesting right because you said it's for everybody yeah. you know it's kind of like even like things like um, financial planning everyone should technically yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be interested yeah. in that right because that has to do with their life um, but I think one of the interesting things for you kind of like what Logan was saying is what keeps your prospect awake at night yeah. so just because you feel like it's for everyone doesn't mean everyone thinks it's as serious or as a big deal as you do that's I know right. that's probably mm -hmm. not the funnest thing to hear, but not everyone feels as crazy about it as you do. Like some people yeah. are just like, yeah, I guess that's important, but but so you, you have different stages, right? With yeah. what you're dealing with, you'll have those people that is like, oh, maybe I should think more about this. You'll have those people that are diehard, like, no, we need to make a movement. And so you kind of need to like figure out with that ideal client avatar, like which stage am I trying to hit here? Yeah. And what kind of um, connections would fit that, you know, if you're looking for those diehard people, then what kind of connections would fit that, right? So for some, that are well yeah. you know, well, yeah. <laughs> like for At someone like you, the mm -hmm. big, a big name out there right now, big title right now going on LinkedIn is diversity and inclusion, Yes. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So anyone that has that title, I'm sure would be interested in what you have to say. Yeah. So it's not, that's you, like, you get what I'm saying? That's like my whole feed. It's just right? <laughs> so it's, it's pretty, so just knowing that, uh, that will help you uh, moving forward. So thank you so much yeah. for sharing it. I love hearing your passion about that. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm kind of similar, except I'm in healing. Healing. So I work on anyone from a baby to a newborn to a pregnant to an elderly person to anyone who's handicapped or any problem. And it's no matter where they are on that journey, I can help them. And sorry, what was your name again? Barb. Barb? Okay. Yeah. And what, um, I guess, what kind of process do you take with this healing? Is this kind of like uh, therapy? I have a number of different ways. <laughs> <laughs> depends on who you're working with because it mm -hmm. depends on what you're dealing with mm -hmm. and what level, um, uh, how would I put it? depends on what you're dealing with and what the client is capable of addressing in certain ways. Mm -hmm. So if there's, if I would normally use one way that's a little hard for them, then I have a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. So I have many different avenues to use to help people work through what they need to work through. And would it be fair to say it's like a therapeutic kind of process that they're going through when they're working with you? No. No? Not at no, all? No, because sometimes I work on the body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I work with just talking through them, like talking with them. Some, that's probably mostly, most of it, because I can do most of it that way. Okay. But your overall... Yeah, a healer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, do you have, okay, so I know, again, it's tough when you're like everybody, yeah, and in some ways that. it is everybody, but yeah. do you have, I guess if you think of the platform I have many markets. I have a market <laughs> for men, a market for women, and uh -huh. one for families, and one for, you know, like the wounded warriors could certainly help them. Mm -hmm. There's like, unlimited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess one of the things that you may want to get... I could work on a specific issue. Yeah. Or I could work on exactly what is showing up for each individual. Right. I so, guess that's my, my key. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very interesting. And what I, was, I would say is that, yeah, because um, I've been meeting a lot of people who have different kind of, like, processes 
that where they want to help people, you know, become whole and get healed. So whether it's like an Enneagram coach, or I think there was someone else I met the other day, she does like a type of um, psychotherapy that's really like this holistic, like really thinking about how my body feels in different aspects. What you, you don't even have to do that with me. Yeah, <laughs> you, and you may not feel, so I guess to, to, to just challenge you a bit, for you, it's very wide open, but for that person coming across your page, they may not actually know what you have to offer them unless you verbalize that, unless you articulate that. So I'm, it may be hard for you to say, oh, I have this one style of healing, but maybe you can talk about that transformation process or, you know, and, and try to really, and if there are certain like categories for it, right? Because even therapists will go, I do, you know, CBT, I do this, I do that. Put that in there because if you just say, you know, I'm he a healer, that might not actually be straightforward enough for those people coming through your page to know what they can do with you. But if you really try to attract those people, you really want to let them know that transformation process that you can put them on. And then, and then for you, maybe it's multiple connections, but like, let's give an example. If it was Wounded Warriors, obviously, like, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, finding veterans, finding people in that field which they, a lot of them will put that in their profile. I'm a former veteran. So it's like, that wouldn't be hard to do, you know? So that's just an example. But I think for you really getting clear with what you'll deliver to them and what your, what your I guess, service or vocation actually is will help them find you. Uh, so that's just something to, to think about. But I do like the idea of how you said it's like a lot of different things. Just know that for the audience, that's not always, um, Help as helpful mm -hmm. right off the bat. Sometimes they actually need to talk to you and discuss with and you that's to get the fuller what happens. picture. When I talk to people, then they actually get the bigger get picture. <laughs> people try to book, and I'm like, we need to talk first. <laughs> yeah. So almost give them like that heads up, even if it's one thing. It's like you could end up doing lots of things, but sometimes you have to pick that one strong feature or that at something at least that you know. If someone's scanning this platform and they're like desperately needing this and they see my profile, they'll know that they can find me, you know? So try and th think of something that would really communicate that. And for you? Yeah, uh, my name is O'Neill. Actually, I just moved to Saskatoon uh, for just about two months. Oh, wow, welcome. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't know we are talking about the LinkedIn. I have one LinkedIn account, but I haven't updated for years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know it was about LinkedIn. Well, okay. Uh, what, yeah. what were you hoping this well, workshop would be? From, <laughs> are you part of Police as Economics Meetup? Uh, I just found this uh, weeks before, and uh, I thought it is about the e business. So okay, <laughs> right. Because there's two of going on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's good. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's Lisa's thing. She will definitely be teaching oh, okay. on that. So I hope you're not disappointed. No, but no. <laughs> yeah, actually, I used to work in a mobile advertising company, mm -hmm. which is from China, and uh, awesome. that company is helping the um, the clients to uh, to um, do the advertising in Facebook. And in Facebook, I know you what you mentioned about we the main purpose is to find the target mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to specify the. Uh, Knows uh, who are we going to target and uh, what are the clients are interested in that mm -hmm. to do some uh, specific targeting. Yes, okay. it'd definitely be good to consider LinkedIn in yeah. this process. Then uh, there's a lot of conversations to be had yeah. there because Facebook's like that pay to play, while LinkedIn yeah. can actually be that play to create a community and sometimes pay to get you there faster. Yeah, but mm -hmm. and uh, that time I think the company mainly focus on uh, Facebook and Google and uh, the. Uh, they start to consider Twitter and the LinkedIn also. Okay, yeah. nice. which doesn't surprise me because of just the direction Facebook's going. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Well, welcome, and I hope you, you're getting a lot of um, valuable information out of this. And like you said, if your profile hasn't been updated for a while, that here's your chance. Yeah. <laughs> and now you can yeah, use that. Time. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure. It's a great way to get in Saskatoon too. Like yeah, you're just coming in, definitely. you want to meet those decision makers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you build your profile the right way and you're very simple and clear about what you're here to do, you'll get some good meetings. For sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I know um, we already kind of made an introduction, but if you could reintroduce yourself to the new people and who you're trying to reach, I guess. Yeah, uh, my name is James Dietrich. Uh, myself and my wife own a financial planning company uh, in Martinsville called Four Corner Financial. Uh, we've been in business for about 20 years mm -hmm. and I'm really surprised to see that you can dial down on LinkedIn to ages. 
because I used a company last year, or I guess beginning of this year, called Copilot that helped me get in front of a lot of people or the opportunity to, to meet a lot of people. And I was told by them that age was not something that you could dial down to using LinkedIn. Mm. Because age would be huge for me because the ideal client that, that we are trying to, uh, to work with or meet would be people in their early to later 50s. Mm -hmm. I might be able to help with that one. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah. so, because like for, for us, like, I, I could be mistaken, but for, for context, like, I consider Fien like the expert when it comes to posting content, positioning yourself appropriately, and, and making yourself look, and then organically having that come to you. And it's a, it's a, it's a skill that I'm, I'm jealous of, to be honest, because I, I like the numbers. I like following the numbers. So where my business partner and I really spent this last year is trying to play in the inner workings of LinkedIn. And the short answer on what that company said to you is correct. You cannot go, I'm looking for 50 plus year olds. However, you can get creative. So you can actually search by seniority inside a company. Right. So if you're looking yeah. for people who are That's 10, exactly 15 this. years plus in, yeah. this, in the company, yeah. those people at least have a higher statistical likelihood of being closer to retirement. And of course, in the financial planning world, government uh, retiring people are just a slam dunk if you can land those people, all union-based, and you can target those people for sure. Is that my fault? That's in your pocket. <laughs> I was like, this is not my usual ringtone, and I know you gave me... So motivational. I'm sorry about that. Someone from New York. I'm using his phone. Wait, New as York? A, yeah, so um, that's all that. good. Um, yeah, yeah, to answer your question, I was actually going to say something very similar to that. There are, you know, the right. listings. Right. You could put, you know, if it was younger people, you could put university students, sure certain schools. Um, and yeah, a lot of people actually do put a lot of honest information on their profiles. Like they will say, yeah, I'm retired, semi retired. So sometimes it's even just searching. Like um, doing name searches, um, can even be certain hashtags. So uh, actually, I think your demographic is still the biggest demographic on LinkedIn right now. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, I don't think you have a problem, no. um, for sure. Uh, it's becoming like a lot of young people are joining it, but it's I would say that's still the predominant like age demographic for sure. And so I guess for you, um, what were some of the things? in terms of like you trying to reach that audience because you've run this um, business you said for like the microphone turned off. Oh did it? Oh I'm sorry, here. Um you said you've done this for twenty years and now you're trying to like think of like the strategy more. So I guess for your That's good now. Were, were you um trying to be really targeted with, with them before? I know you said you worked with a company that said you couldn't do the ages. Um, was there any like content strategy? Was there any kind of messaging strategy? Yeah, that there was you? a huge content and messaging strategy, and it was great. It worked out so well. It, it generated two thousand. Um, what do you call it? Connections, connections, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. So now we're just going through those connections and, and trying to figure out from that information who we want to approach mm. and how to best do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's not really trying to find a target at this point. You're just trying to get different ideas of how to reach out to these people. Well, I just didn't know exactly what you were going to talk about this evening, and I just felt like I should be a little bit more knowledgeable about LinkedIn, and that's really why I'm here. Okay. Awesome. 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 Well, don't be afraid to ask specific questions. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because there's definitely enough experience in the room to probably answer every question you have. And yeah, for you. Yeah, um, well my, my name is Paul Fargo, so I kind of have a dual purpose, I think, <laughs> in a way, like I, I'm, I have 20 years experience as an engineer, mm -hmm. so I have like kind of corporate experience in, in a variety of ex things like construction management and safety, so I've used LinkedIn historically for that. And over the last couple of years I'm transitioning into, I'm building a financial services business you know, helping families earn extra income and save money. So I've been trying to use it a little bit. I haven't d dove into LinkedIn too much yet, but mm -hmm. a little bit to reach out for prospecting clients and finding clients that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I've kind of built a, so far, like tried to s 
have like both displayed, like that, like my engineering safety experience plus also, um, s you know, starting my own financial business. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to do that without kind of upsetting my corporate world, uh, but also try to, I don't know, try to balance both, right? Right. And I'm just kind of, yeah, just kind of came to see what you're going to talk about and everything. Yeah. For sure. Um, and yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming, because you're in the engineering, um, from the corporate side, they prop do they have a lot of rules against people kind of promoting themselves in other ways through social media? Is there anything around that or not really, in terms of that industry itself? Um, well, I'm not, not, I don't think formally, like I think mm -hmm. informally, like say if I was looking for another job, I, that's one thing I kind of worry about is okay, if a recruiter's looking at me and they're like, okay, you're doing this, but you're also just trying to start your own business, so would you really be interested in, you know, in a job sort of thing? Or, so that's kind of one aspect. And then also, in the corporate world, in the past, it seemed like LinkedIn was more personal, it was your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then over the last five, 10 years, probably more f the last five years, I think I've seen where companies are kind of encouraging their employees to start branding and marketing the company. So you're, it's, they're kind of taking away that pers personal part of it. Like it used to be more like just your own personal resume, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to engage their employees to market their company. So you're kind of being almost forced to market your company and, and yourself or, you know, or build a brand within yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's like kind of conf sometimes could be conflicting things, right? And yeah. I don't know. It's very interesting that you put that out there because, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Um, more so for the LinkedIn platform, they tend to, um, yeah, so the way the feed kind of works is people, they put a lot of emphasis on the personal profile and what you're posting, and then that could then lead people to the company page. So I know for me personally, I think my company page now has like 100 followers, but that was because people were following my content. And so for the longest time, it was just sitting there, like nobody was checking my company page. But then because they were following me, then they followed the company page. So it makes sense that they would be trying to encourage you guys to then actually create content um, because they know it's gonna feel back to them. Um, and, I, and the reason why I was asking that question is it depends, like maybe what you're doing on the side doesn't actually affect your specific industry. So some companies are actually okay with people having side hustles. Like I know when I was doing my internship with AgWest Bio, some are, yeah, some, some encourage it, especially modern ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know there's a lot of people who it, it wasn't encouraged. Um, there's actually a, a girl on, I saw his expressions. <laughs> there's a girl on LinkedIn. I can't that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Ruby Lee. She's a big uh, LinkedIn influencer, and she, yeah, she almost got fired for having like a whole side thing because uh, she worked in HR, but she was also trying to coach people on how to get jobs, and so she was kind of building a personal brand um, on LinkedIn doing videos. So that company was like, whoa, 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 like, what are you doing here? And then she you know, left the job and went to another company and in the interview she told them, hey, I do this thing, do you guys mind? And they're like, actually, we love when people have side hustles. We want people to be creative. So I think there is innovation happening in the industries around that. Um, I know for myself personally, when I worked with AgWest Bio, um, they knew I had Okiki Consulting and it was totally fine. And often I would do things in the company, like I would be taking those online courses if they didn't have anything to give me like that day, I'd be like, can I use your systems? Can I use your programs to work on these skills? Because this is what I actually need to build myself up in. And they were totally okay with that. So it might just be even something as simple as having a conversation with your company, because I, I see them as two very different industries. But it may be as simple as having a conversation, you know, with your boss, with your HR person, be like, is this okay? Because those are two things that you are passionate about. It doesn't sound like you're leaving, <laughs> leaving that place. Um, yeah, and then if you are trying to move on to another job, that is another like sticky thing. Whether that has to be messages with the recruiter and not just live on the you know in the newsfeed kind of thing. But um, again, it's it's kind of like your personal decision of how you want to level up, how you want to move forward in your industry. So I keep piping up, but. Uh, is it alright if I add yeah. something to that? So, uh, as Fian said at the beginning, it's uh, personal brands are for everyone. 
and at the end of the day, we're actually moving into a world where for HR managers, when you're trying to talk about a 20 year career, unless it's you're in a union job or a government job, the idea of a 20 year career these days is becoming more and more fleeting. It's especially with this next generation, the idea of being able to own your own thing, do your own thing is just becoming too attractive for people not to try. And right now, the way that the money's transferring in the world, it's becoming easier now than ever to do it. And so, it, and then with social media on top of that, and the way that we're consuming information, now it's turning into a thing of, we're not watching TV anymore, our entertainment is actually the people in our circles that we choose to spend time around, like mm -hmm. YouTube channels, LinkedIn, yeah. so on and so forth. So, what, in my opinion, at least, is what's coming is, is that corporations will, should start considering encouraging employees, kind of like what you mentioned, I was actually, you used a lot of like, the way you structured it, it's like, that's actually exactly what I, I'm calling is happening, is corporations should encourage their staff to integrate the things that they're doing, ideally with the side hustle situation, because with a side hustle, and, and then what they're doing professionally as a full time. When you combine the two, what happens is, is that your side hustle is likely a lot more attractive than, and calling it now, a lot more attractive than, say, doing admin paperwork at a financial company. But if somebody is doing something that is along the lines of, I don't know, maybe they're, they like, they have a band, or maybe they're part of something that they can use to express themselves, and they're putting that, and they tie that in with the fact that they're working at this company at the same time, and they're thinking about that, and imagine if they had the creative freedom to do that in the workplace, so long as they're paying deliverables and whatnot, their audiences are going to start saying, hey, I actually want to work with the people that you spend time with, because I also want to support you professionally. Then it actually turns into a revenue opportunity for the primary organizations that are employing them, and everybody actually winds up becoming salespeople. And as Fian was saying, well, I, I actually didn't know this number, that you had like 1,600 in September, and now you had over 5,000 okay. <laughs> people following now, which is just mind-blowing. So now, imagine if you were working in another corporation and you're making that part of your journey as well. Statistically speaking, you're gonna have somebody in that pool that's gonna want to work with your primary organization as well. Yeah, so it's really funny that you're saying they're, they're making you do that because they are understanding this concept of personal branding. That's just where it's moving. And the companies know that people no longer just interact with just this company name. They interact with people. And so they have to use their people, you know, to make people gain trust with their company when they're much bigger. They don't really have that option. Unless the CEO himself makes himself the personal brand. You know, mm -hmm. you can start with like Richard Branson and like, <laughs> all, like all these kind of like more eccentric people or like Gary Vee, which I will talk about right away here. Um, I don't know if you guys wanted to talk about anything. Um, so I organized another um, meetup group. It's e-commerce and mindset meetup. And so thank you for coming. <laughs> um, it's still pretty small. This is like the third meetup with it. So. Um, and I run my own company called Unbound Market, and I do a lot of e-commerce and video production. I've been selling on Amazon for a few years and doing like Amazon FBA product development. I have a few clients that um, I've been shooting videos like for e-courses and then doing product development for them as well. And so yeah, I'm just expanding out on that and wanting to connect with great people like this and uh, yeah, just learn from each other because technology changes so fast. And the more people you have in the same room, the better it is. We can all do better. So, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. My name is Diakri, and I'm happy to be here. Um, the managing partner at uh, Morpheus Interactive with myself and Logan. I'm a so-called a funnel expert. If you don't know what a funnel is, there's a workshop coming up. <laughs> in the new year, and uh, we'll be going through how to create funnels and things like that. What Fian is talking about is actually very, very interesting. This, I will consider it the starting process of your funnel, if you have a funnel. So what a funnel is, is a sequence of a journey of that people go through before they reach you. Before they come to you, they're like, hey, I want to buy from you. What are the touching points they have to go through? And LinkedIn is one of the most important ones. Mm -hmm. So in the future, I, I'm thinking January, we're going to be looking at all this and I'm going to be doing a workshop on this. And um, yeah, I'm glad everybody's here. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And uh, let's, uh, let's, keep let's not forget the camera guy. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Do you want to? Speak up? Sure, yeah. I'm the camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Daniel. I'm a photographer, videographer, and um, 
yeah, I run my own business, Day Go Photography, and uh, I went full time sometime this this summer. But I've been doing photography for four years, and uh, yeah, what what else were we? Uh, is that it? What's the pain point of your avatar? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go to photographer at their wedding, maybe. You know. Say that again? Maybe they don't have a photographer for their wedding. However, you know. Yeah, I guess. Wherever there are people um, doing <laughs> stuff, I, I have a potential to be there. Like right now, she's talking about business. When people fall in love and want to get married, I'm also there. Um, you know, businesses want to make ads, stuff, whatever it is. I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> so, everywhere is a thing for me. <laughs> and next we're going to talk about content strategy and um, yeah so with all that you're doing I believe there's four types of content that you can and should be posting and this is actually the last part of the presentation so we can get into questions I've been enjoying these discussions so we can get into that after and so yeah first and foremost video LinkedIn's pushing that the most that's just the thing they want people to be creating video they want people to be active on their platform. Like I said, I gave that percentage of how low content <laughs> posting actually is. They want it to be a place where people create content. So I think anything, actually I know, anything on the feed especially is getting favor. And right now they're really pushing video because on all the platforms, not just LinkedIn, video is just dominating right now. So um, yeah, this is one of the videos I made about <laughs> four ways to dominate LinkedIn with your personal brand, and it was uh, trending on the business wall, and it got a lot of interaction, so that was really fun. I create probably like two to four videos that I post a week. Um, sometimes it's me talking like this, sometimes it's uh, podcast interviews, but again, it's just another way to build your personal brand on there. Uh, next, there's documents. So this is a, kind of a cool feature, so especially for some of you who have a little bit of more like heady concepts, I would think it's be really good for you actually to use, and I don't know if that's something you've discussed already with the people you made your content plan with, but having um, documents, uh, it could be a PowerPoint slide, a PDF, Word docs, and the cool thing is it's very interactive, so once it's actually on there, people can you know click through, go through, and you can put all sorts of information. So I, I think this is an opportunity to use, of course, if you have, um, you know, even for yours, right? If you have certain facts about um, how people, you know, <laughs> different cultural groups in, interact with each other, and and uh, was what are some of the issues? Like, what are the statistics around that? Any kind of heady information, you can put that together. You know, infographics. That's a great way to use it. So there's a lot of opportunities with that. I like documents, especially, and I put them next because people can actually download them right off of your um, your feed, so they can keep that information with them. And so that way, if you have any contact information or anything specific in there, you know they're kind of taking it with them. Um, next, I have kind of in the same category, photos and graphics, because I'm thinking of very visual kind of pieces to put on LinkedIn. And so as you can see, there's some familiar faces here. <laughs> uh, so I took uh, photos of these guys right here in the office, actually, because I also help people um, with branding photography. So this is really fun. Um, but I noticed that on LinkedIn, people don't really post photos. And there's actually a lot of local photographers mm -hmm. on the Saskatoon, even for Saskatoon, on LinkedIn. But I've never seen them post a photo or any photo session. That's crazy, right? If you think about it, like the opportunities there. So you can see how many views like this posting got. And it's um, the cool thing with photos is you can put a lot of you know, photos on there. People can scroll through them. It's very interactive. So I think people should be, you know, thinking of it that way. People think of, you know, Instagram and Pinterest as very visual places. I think people should think of LinkedIn that way too. It's not quite there yet, but I, I think that's an area people should try and delve into more. So these are just photos from different events that, this is the event that Diak and I actually ran together called Afrotech YXC. So again, I shared this and then um, Innovation Saskatchewan re-shared it and a few other people. Um, and they discussed the event, so it was really. What event was it? It was called Afrotech YXC. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was celebrating. Um, I was the only white guy there. Yeah. <laughs> you can see. There's a few other pictures of him, but you can see. Yeah, there's, there. Yeah, you can see my side view. <laughs> yeah, it was celebrating, you know, uh, black techpreneurs in the community. But the cool thing is, it was how the that. one white guy. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one like that. Who wanted to know about it too? Uh, was, uh, okay. And uh, it was held at Collabs, but That's the cool awesome. thing is Collabs is Saskatchewan. Yeah, I think it's Saskatchewan's only tech incubator. They hosted us. They wrote about it. They added it to their blog. Innovation Saskatchewan added it to their blog. Um, they were totally into it, so they hosted us for free. So talking about like um, different you know cultures and interactions. Yeah. When you tell people what your vision is, people are often uh, people can be quite supportive. So there's opportunities there. Um, another thing I put in the same category is graphics. So as you can see um, in the top, you can see before and after. So I made this graphic to show how I helped a TikTok <coughs> influencer who was using LinkedIn to represent herself better uh, because obviously you can see from the top photo if you saw that you wouldn't really know her personality or what she's about or even what she's trying to accomplish by being on the platform and actually I found it because she was writing a lot of posts like how does this place work and I don't really get this platform <laughs> and, like, you know and I reached out to her because I was wondering what is she doing here and it, also um does everyone here know Gary V yeah. Okay, so he, oh, Gary Vee, I'll get to that in a second, but he basically told all these TikTokers, go to LinkedIn, and they're all like, this is not TikTok, like, how does this work? So I, I just, you know, set up a coaching session, and I said, hey, you have 117,000 followers on TikTok. You could, you could get, you know, tell people that you're willing to do brand collaborations, because a lot of these brands, a lot of these companies, their people are on LinkedIn then you have something you kind of can play with. And then change up your pictures. So I found these pictures on her Instagram. And I said, these pictures I think represent you way better. Because when you meet her, she's very bubbly. She's very fun. So if you see the first picture, you would have no idea of that. So that's why I talk about personal branding, picking a picture that really represents you well. And then putting her intentions right on um, her back cover photo. So sometimes graphics can really explain things. So Gary Vaynerchuk is a really big influencer on LinkedIn. And just to show you how creative you can get, he is actually, I think he pioneered this, but actually using cartoons on LinkedIn. And so kind of back to um, how we're saying about the older demographic on LinkedIn, it actually surprised me that this even worked, but this is one of his most engaged pieces of content. And he uses it to convey simple business ideas. Because so, LinkedIn users are still used to reading the comics in the newspaper. <laughs> maybe so. that, maybe that. But it's actually working quite well. So you can be very creative with how you can communicate <laughs> information. All right. And then last but not least, we have articles. So again, if you wanted to convey even more um, long form content, uh, this is a good way to do it. Articles aren't really direct on the news feed. So this at one point was um, like LinkedIn's like primary thing was articles. And so, but right now they're really focusing on like video and like everything that can really show up on the feed that people can actually interact with. That's not to say these aren't still valid, they are. But I find that if you have content that can lead people to these articles, that's actually way more effective just because it kind of takes them on a segue to get there. Yes. Uh, somebody online is asking, when I make content for Facebook, I use Canva. Is there a specific size for the graphic that, should, that they should use for LinkedIn? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and yes, I believe it's that like 16 by 9 or um, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Uh, yeah, because if you use the same pixels that you would for Facebook, you'll find that the edges are cut off, so it'll kind of be strange. Um, kind of like <laughs> like this uh, presentation, I originally made it on Keynote, so they have very different proportions than PowerPoint. So it's like just realizing what each thing has, but that's a really good question. Yeah, so for articles though, if you do have long form information, if you do have publications that you have made, this is actually a great way to post it. I use it to repost my, repurpose rather, my podcast show notes. And I do get interaction on them. I find the people that interact with the articles are very different than the people that interact with the videos. So that's something to think about. Like if you have, you know, more heavier topics or more dense information or facts that you want to convey, this might be a really good avenue for you. And I think that's something unique about the platform that I actually very much enjoy, is that you can pretty much create your own blog on here. So that's the end for my information. Uh, any more Q&A on this? What 
do you charge to do that? To help someone do that. To help someone do that? Mm -hmm. Do you want to go straight to it now, or do we want to <laughs> ask more questions? <laughs> I, I will get there, though. Um, yeah? So um, when you started your company, you started with um, Facebook and Instagram was your initial <coughs> content, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I would barely log into LinkedIn. I would just be like, OK. Or maybe apply maybe. for a job here and there. Yeah. OK. And then it wasn't. It wasn't like I didn't get it. I was just like, this isn't interesting. <laughs> There's nothing going on on here. So. So you said in September is when you really got interested in upping your game in LinkedIn. Yeah. So how? What's the? What was the time difference between when you started the, the other social media to the time you cut till September? Like how long have you been doing this? Oh, like almost two years. Oh, okay. It was almost two years before I even okay. considered it. Yeah, for sure. So um, and yeah, if not for and the actually I, to kind of give some more information. The podcast I listened to, the influencer, she got LinkedIn top voice and her name's Goldie Chan and she's the one that actually encouraged me to go on there because this is, um, she's like probably only a couple of years older than me. She has bright green hair mm -hmm. and she was the LinkedIn top voice. And to me, I was going, I did not think based on the LinkedIn demographic that you would be a popular person on here. But if there's space for you, there's probably space for me. And so that's kind of where that journey started. And you know, if you start doing things on LinkedIn, like creating content, they'll send other content creators your way. So I found that I've seen a lot of other content creators. And surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, a lot of them are millennials. There are people that aren't, of course, that are creating content. And I'm like, good for you that you're doing that. Because initially when that wave happened, there were a lot of people complaining. Uh, there, <laughs> there's people, they got lots of clients too, but there's also a lot of people like, why are you creating this type of content? This is not Facebook, what is this, right? So it's still kind of weird to people on there, but I think if people understand, like people are trying to establish personal brand and not everyone's gonna love it, that's fine. But the people that see you and see what you're about will go to you right away. And that's kind of the point. And if you're really thinking of it as a networking platform, it kind of makes sense to show up and like yeah. and be there you know so so yeah for sure yeah somebody online is asking is there a video length limit oh yeah very good question uh i believe it's 10 minutes gotcha. yeah what's an effective video length an effective video length <laughs> <laughs> another very good question um usually like one to two minutes is kind of like what they say um when, maybe when you start building a following and you get more people interested in your actual content, you could try longer. Like that video I showed you, I think it was seven minutes long, so I was actually surprised it was trending, but I tried to put it chock full of information, and by then, I think I've been posting video for a while, so people were kind of used to, the people who were following me were used to what I had. But I wouldn't try like a 10 minute video <laughs> off the bat, it may not get the attraction you want. Yes? Um, have you ever hired like a virtual assistant to reach out to people? Um, I have not personally. Um, I'm kind of trying this thing with Yaki and Lo Logan uh, because prior to meeting them, I think, yeah, so I think my first couple months I was just on my own and I got into like a pure like 3,000 connections just through me just going like, hey, like, how's it going? I do this, blah, blah, blah. And then now, now they're trying to partner with me with what they have, which I think kind of runs more to what you're saying. So now it's like a mix, because I still, I just naturally want to go out there and like network and like look up cool names. So I still like message people, connect with people, make interactions, especially for my podcast, and then they also have something going on for me. There, uh, and just to add on to that, there's two points in which I see, well actually maybe three, why virtual assistants can be very useful. The first point is is if you're if you have a lot of inbound traffic like what Fian is getting to that point of where because she's growing quickly she has a lot of people messaging her just to handle that flow to filter out basically high quality conversations versus uh, well even on LinkedIn there's a lot of low quality conversations that occur um, there's of course outbound strategy as well so. Uh, just like you can have people ask to connect with you, you can also ask to connect with them. And that's where the conversation comes in for uh, picking your demographic, doing your client avatar, being very specific, understanding your messaging, so on and so forth. The last one is, is 
uh, the content side as well. Some uh, Gary B believes in having 60 to 80 pieces of content posted a day. Well, <laughs> good luck. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but a VA can make that a little bit more feasible. You know, sometimes having five to 10 pieces of content, and we're talking across a whole bunch of platforms, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, list goes on. So mm -hmm. that's where VAs really have a, a huge place, I would say. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, any other questions? Um, on my LinkedIn, there's this woman that I uh, followed, and I can never. So sometimes she'll just post even just like a believe in yourself or something like that. Just like just that, and then there'll be twenty six thousand people that are liking it. And I'm like, mm. I don't understand. I'm like, there's nothing profound about what she's doing. And I look at someone else who's who actually has like a profound you know, message or something really different, and they have like five likes or something, and I'm like, I don't understand, but she keeps coming up with these, these, I don't know, and then I'm just mm -hmm. like, this is, I don't really, so I just kind of got confused by what that was all about, and yeah. Yeah, and, I I, and I'm sure with those people, it's like a mixed strategy, right? Like, I talk about the strategic connections yeah. and content, because yeah it's not like just putting out content to the world like she probably behind the scenes has something going on of like trying to interact and connect with all these That's people who eventually <laughs> interact and connect with her content yeah. and so to you you're like this is it like groundbreaking stuff here but she has clearly built that following and they seem very excited about what she has to say and that's yeah. and that's what I'm talking about because if you have things that are very specific and you find those people they will be excited about what you have to say that's the reality of it um, some people just you know exclusively follow some people just because they like who they are and their message so again like for you maybe when you start making videos that talk yeah. about some of these topics yeah uh, you you could have that potential of getting those diehards too and for you you're like hey my topics are way more serious than that, and, and you know, way more. You'll get the audience that wants that, yeah, right? Yeah. Some some people who want that believe in yourself, like, which yeah. is there's there's yeah, a speech for that. It's, it's, it's they're good, looking it's for just like I, it, I just couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. I just didn't understand that. I don't know. It just, yeah. Did it make you want to look up her name? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, totally. You did. I was like, oh, is this person? Yeah. yeah. Why is everyone's like, what's everyone mm -hmm. crazy about? And yeah. I found her, you know, I found her like lovely, but I was still couldn't understand. You're what confused about what the, is all this crazy about. Crazy appeal was, yeah. Right. No, totally. She about she makes her Yeah. Yeah. Well, this might be an interesting point no, for Diakri to talk about that TikTok post. <laughs> because when you talk about things that confuse the tar out of you yeah. that don't make sense, oh my goodness, it's just an outrage. So uh, yeah, that, it, it doesn't though. I mean, so yeah. can, you, can you tell the story quick? Like, oh so, my gosh! Uh, I'm not sure. Does everybody know what TikTok is? No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay, so TikTok is like Twitter, but for videos. Oh, it's okay. Super lightweight, and it's like one minute video. That's it. Right, so I found a video, I was like, well, this is entertaining. Let me see if TikTok people will like it. So I posted on TikTok, and out of, a, like, out of nowhere, people just start commenting and commenting and tagging their friends. And uh, I checked a few days later, and it was over a million people had viewed it and liked it. You got a million like the first day. It was, it was like, like after day one, after four day days. Day one. <laughs> a video of yourself? No. no this it was video just that. It's the same kind of thing that you were talking about with just like believe in yourself. Yeah. For him, it was, it was a kid jumping on a trampoline just doing a bunch of flips and then some guy edited the video to make it like entertaining. Yeah. And it just really clicked. So. And, and yet, it's just entertainment and value. And if you watch it, you're like, are... really? <laughs> this has 10 million views now? What? But, like, yeah. it's so funny, but that's... So, so the byproduct of that, though, he had 9.6 million views, not one. He had 9.6 million views across the world. And mm -hmm. on his TikTok account, he has over 65,000 followers. Somewhere in there. That he gained because of that one video. Yeah, all from wow. one video. You've got to be kidding me. No, so, but, but now here's the thing. We can also acknowledge that the vast, vast, vast majority of that are not your ideal people that you want to do business with. However, you still got the attention of a lot of people, and you can use that as A, for credibility for whatever else you're doing in life, and B, there's likely a sub-market inside that, just like any mathematical equation, where somewhere in that curve, there's your target market, and now you actually have the opportunity to talk to those people because they're following you. You've earned their trust, you've earned the right for you to talk about what you're actually doing. 
Yeah, and similarly to what you're saying, so another influencer I follow is Shay Robottom. She does a lot of videos that give value, but she has a lot of viral videos that are just her being goofy. Uh, she literally has like work rap videos where she's like making these parodies about work, and those stuff have gone viral. So that is, and because nobody was really doing comedy or those kind of videos on there, she's gotten so many clients. So I think within a year, she's built her business to seven figures. Because like Logan said, there's a bunch of people who are just watching that video for entertainment. It's like, whatever, right? And then all of a sudden there's some people in the middle of that who are like, wow, you could really create some compelling videos. I want to work with you, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, you, it's, yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, yeah. I was going to say, like, she mentioned about somebody that had a post and just a bunch of likes or whatever. And, like, do you try to engage? Like, I've seen that too where if, if, you get someone like Cheryl Bottom or Grant Cardone or Gary B to interact with one of your videos, then all of a sudden, like I go from my maybe 30 followers to someone like them with a hundred thousand million followers, and then like that video would go viral or, or you know, potentially explode, right? So, as a strategy, do you try to get more engagement with the influencers like that? Okay. That's an interesting. <laughs> that's a yeah, really I've interesting seen a lot question. Of people, a lot of people will do that. They'll take yeah. Gary Vee or they'll take that Oleg or someone with a big following. Yeah. And and then all of a sudden they got a bunch of followers too, right? Or yeah. Or, For sure. Yeah. Well, to answer your question, actually, Shay encourages people to tag people. Yeah. She's like, tag everyone. She's like, tag me. I may not see it, but if I do and I like it, I will definitely respond. So yeah you can't lose anything by tagging these people and if that's what you want, what you want. To, to get that attention just keeping in mind they probably have like thousands of people who are tagging them um, but do it anyways you never know they may find yours and, and really like what you have to say so i think it's a mix of that it's also kind of building your own following too right as people are interacting with your own videos your own content like you said you got 2000 connections um, if you're noticing they're interacting with your content, right? Start interacting back with that because those are all like brownie mm -hmm. points with the algorithm, but it's also with the people too. They actually want to know that, oh, you acknowledge what I was saying, you know, and this and that. So like, I know I had a video about why you should work on your background photo. I know this girl on the platform was like, oh, I should work on mine right away. And then I know she commented on another post I had and I, I was like, thanks so much for commenting. How's that background photo going? And she's like, oh, yeah, I have to work on that today. <laughs> so like, just that they know that you recognize them and that you're actually like interacting with them as a human being, that really builds things up as well. But yeah, for sure, some people, that's why, you know, Logan and Diakri and I, we're trying to even figure out for the new year, right? Because there's some videos that were like, okay, for this one, we're trying to aim for viral. Maybe it'll work. But for some of these, we, we really just want to educate and, and enrich our community. Because you don't, I mean, unless that's all you go for. For example, there are connections I have that all they post is like dog videos and cat videos. And yes, every video they have is viral, but I have no idea what they do. So yeah, if that's your goal, fine. But like, for for me, legitimately, I am trying to give value to people. But in I understand the fact that obviously virality can help draw um, those crafts. So it's kind of like that weird like marketing mix of like, what do you do? What did, oh, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Somebody online is asking, when you look at your connections, what does first, second, besides a connection name mean? Yeah, that's, thank you, online too. You guys have great questions. Yeah. So first means that you're actually connected with them, that you can message them. So if you don't have premium, I've never gotten premium, but like, <laughs> uh, if you, yeah, unless you have premium, you can't just message people anyhow. LinkedIn's like very um, locked down on that kind of thing. So unless they're your first connection. Second is like, they're likely friends with a friend of yours. So they have more of a chance of, you know, they, they have definitely a chance of seeing your content. So that's very cool. Um, but again, they're not connected to you yet. And then third's like even further out, like, Maybe there's no mutual connections at all or anything, but they're like maybe in the same region as, as you or the same industry as you. So it's just, that's how they kind of go go by that. But yeah, definitely if you have the first connections, um, most of the time the content will be seen obviously by first and then chances are by second as well, especially if someone in your first connection liked it, then their friends would likely see that. So just to give you an idea. Oh, right. So I, yeah. I was about to ask, would it make sense to maybe explain the idea of a content posting schedule? 
like I remember I think was it yesterday mm -hmm. we were talking about how like Mondays maybe it makes sense to go lighthearted Tuesdays it makes sense to go valuable Wednesdays there you know like is there merit to the yeah um okay so from what I understand about LinkedIn um use, yeah so um now this is interesting too because you may actually want to figure can you see that over there should I move um, it's okay. no, it's fine. um you may want to actually figure that out in light of your specific audience if you check like general information they will tell you Tuesday to Wednesday is sorry, Tuesday to Thursday, rather, is the best, strongest time to post. And that um, is a little weak on Monday and Friday, and then the weekends are just terrible, just awful for that. Generally, because just the mindset around that. Um, I know for Shay, for some reason, she said, and she, she admits a lot in videos, so I really watch these people because they tell a lot of information, but she said for some reason, Monday at 2 p.m. works really well for her, but most, um, scheduling kind of research databases that do LinkedIn wouldn't recommend Monday necessarily. So that's very interesting. So I think also track your audience and track the times that they're paying the most attention. Um, but I've noticed, yeah, if I post on these days, it's definitely the strongest. And I've even played around with different times. So um, I know a lot of the recommended times when I checked online were like 11 or 12, but I actually found for some reason my audience seems to like it when I post around like 4 or 5. I don't know why, but like that seems to be like a better spot for me these days. So that's kind of where I focus my, my times of posting. I don't know why they prefer that time, but I just find they get way more engaged and way more into it. And, and mind you, I'm talking about different time zones here because I actually have a lot of followers from the States as well. and so. Again, I couldn't tell you why that is, but I think to track how people are engaging with your content. Um, but yeah, if for general, like from the start, definitely these three days are like your core days. And so me and Logan were trying to like discuss like, you know, Mondays people, there's so many things about people hate Mondays, right? And stuff, so like on LinkedIn, there's a lot of like happy Monday and like, you know, trying to like pep people up. So we were thinking like, it'd be nice to have Kind of something fun, lighthearted to kind of get people excited for the week. Kind of like in that entertaining category, like yeah. that anomaly. Like maybe there's merit to that posting schedule where make it entertaining for Mondays and Fridays because people aren't looking to get serious on those days anyways. Especially, I would assume at 4 o'clock on a Friday would probably be a yeah. really bad time to post. Like a really deep discussion, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't know, if your following's <laughs> digging it, you know, maybe That's they're true. serious all the time. But really, yeah, to, to kind of you know, recognize some of those patterns on the platform. So. Uh, motivation Mondays, right? Mm. Yeah. That's what, that's that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Trash yeah. talk Tuesdays. Trash talk <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I should Whoa. do. Whoa. <laughs> looks like you've got your content <laughs> schedule yeah. figured out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go around so the world and trash Why bother Wednesdays? <laughs> why <or>? bother Wednesdays? <laughs> um, so if there isn't any more questions, is there any more questions? Yeah? Um, so yeah, for this, I'm actually, um, yeah, so I'm going to help people if they want to have a custom design, like background photo. Um, if you need photographs, I guess you could, that's another discussion you could talk to us about after as well. Um, but yeah, so basically with our session here, we're really going to try and come up with like a core message for your brand theme, kind of like I showed you. Um, with the girl with the beauty industry, you know, business, like trying to find that line that's really clear, trying to make your about section very clear, so we'll work on that together, making sure you're communicating that information. Um, and, you know, if you need other sections to add that would make you more credible, like in some cases, depending on the industry, you might need more of those certificates to really show um, what you're capable of. And then, yeah, I'll make a custom background photo for you with graphic design and everything. So. Um, Right now I'm having it for uh, 150, and I'm actually, if you are actually interested in this, you can talk to me about it uh, after this. Um, and then I, I've given everyone my business cards, and if you have one to give to me, I can send you an email um, and send you a private link, because actually this thing, I'm taking bookings for the new year, but I'm not like re-offering it in the new year, if that makes any sense. So with the link, you can make bookings 
for January and stuff, but like um, after that, I'm not gonna have that available because I kind of want to make it part of a more holistic offering or course. Just because once you have your platform and your uh, profile optimized, that's really just the first step. So I really want to help people with the full like big picture, like with you know content creation and um, really trying to leverage those contents. Really trying to talk to people. Like you said, you have those two thousand connections. Like, how do I engage those people then in conversation for the next steps? Like, really, like, looking at that. So that's kind of where I want to go with that. But, yeah, that's in transparency what I have open. So if that's something that you really feel like you want to get started with, I definitely uh, would be more than happy to work with you. And, yeah, um, I also have my contact info. So for the people online, uh, that's info at Okiki Consulting is my email. And that's O-K-I-K-I -I Consulting. And my website is www.okikiconsulting.com. And uh, you can find me on LinkedIn at Fian O'Brien. So that's F-I-Y-I-N-O-B-A-Y-A-N. And on Facebook and Instagram, uh, it's at Okiki Consulting. So that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, just the great discussion we had. And I love learning about all of you and like the different industries. And, capacities you worked in. So I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>